is News 3 Now at 10. To those who wreaked havoc in our capital today, you did not win. Violence never wins. Freedom wins. And this is still the people's house. Thanks for joining us tonight. Today is a day that will go down in American history. Pro-Trump supporters charging and breaking into the U.S. Capitol building during a joint session of Congress. This is a live look in Washington, D.C., much quieter tonight. Right now, lawmakers are back at work picking up where they left off. A curfew went into place at 6 o'clock Eastern, and this evening, police declared the Capitol building secure. After being evacuated, members of the U.S. Senate, surrounded by members of the military, FBI, and Capitol Police, made their way back into the Senate chambers to continue to officially count the Electoral College votes. Well, they were first evacuated this afternoon when hundreds of people pushed past police and smashed their way into the building. Video shows the group breaking the glass on one of the doors and windows before entering. The police chief of Washington, D.C. declared that scene a riot. They say the violent protesters used chemical irritants on police in order to break in. One civilian was shot inside the Capitol. We are told that that individual has since died. Some incredible photos showing what happened inside. This one showing what appears to be an armed standoff. Officers in one of the chambers blocking the door with furniture and pointing their weapons. One of the windows appears to have been smashed. And these photos show some of the people who broke into the chambers and even into Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office. One leaving her a note on her desk saying they will not back down. And for a moment, lawmakers were also ordered to wear gas masks. These photos tweeted out by Maryland Democratic Representative David Trone showing lawmakers being evacuated. The Capitol has been declared safe and lawmakers are back at work. Natalie Brand is on Capitol Hill with the very latest. The Capitol is secured and the people's work continues. On the Senate floor, Vice President Mike Pence gave a rousing speech as lawmakers reconvened to continue counting electoral votes. We must and we will show to the country and indeed to the world that we will not be diverted from our duty. Earlier, rioters stormed the building, breaking through doors and busting windows. Capitol Police drew their weapons at one barricaded door from inside the House, though eventually protesters breached both chambers. Ahead of the chaos, members of the House and Senate had broken from joint session to debate a challenge by some GOP members to Arizona's electoral votes. I urge my colleagues to move forward with completing the electoral count to refrain from further objections. This president bears a great deal of the blame. President Trump posted a video that has since been removed from Facebook and Twitter urging calm. You have to go home now. Hours earlier, he addressed a gathering near the White House. We will never give up. We will never concede. President-elect Joe Biden also addressed the chaos here, calling it an assault on democracy and an insurrection. Today's reminder, a painful one, that democracy is fragile, and to preserve it requires people of goodwill, leaders of the courage to stand up. In response to the day's chaos, several Democratic lawmakers are now calling for President Trump to be removed from office. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Well, the president's former defense secretary, James Mattis, slammed the president in a statement saying, quote, today's violent assault on our capital and effort to subjugate American democracy by mob rule was fomented by Mr. Trump. And new tonight, Twitter has suspended the president's account, meaning he will not be able to access it for 12 hours and warned that he may get banned. The social media giant flagged and removed several of his posts, saying they incited violence and violated their policies. Facebook has also blocked the president from posting. Also new tonight, First Lady Melania Trump's chief of staff has resigned over today's violence. Stephanie Grisham, who is also the former White House communications director, submitted her resignation tonight. She was one of the longest serving Trump administration officials, having begun her tenure working for then candidate Donald Trump in 2015. Here at home, we are hearing strong messages condemning the riots and violence at the Capitol today. Both Democrats and Republicans in Wisconsin are calling calling for peace. Madeline O'Neill breaks down what they're saying. 
Well, it's a much different day here at the state capitol than at the U.S. Capitol in D.C. But even here, we're hearing from our governor, the Dane County Sheriff, local politicians, nearly all leaders weighing in on this historic day. And, and I don't use the word protesters because this isn't a protest. This is, again, I think an attempted coup. They're words we don't often use talking about our country coming from both sides of the aisle. This is banana republic crap that we're watching happen right now. Republican U.S. Representative Mike Gallagher of Green Bay posted this video while sheltering in place following the mob storming the Capitol. This is the cost of countenancing an effort by Congress to overturn the election and telling thousands of people that there is a legitimate shot of overturning the election. Democrats like U.S. Rep Ron Kind of Lacrosse place blame on the president. And for the last two months, the president has doubled down uh, on the fraudulent allegations of uh, this election. Uh, fortunately, it's culminating today. Some, like U.S. Rep Gwen Moore of Milwaukee and our state's attorney general, Josh Call, are calling for Trump's removal from office. Republican leaders in our state aren't going that far, instead condemning the violence itself. In a statement, U.S. Rep Brian Stiles said, quote, As I said about protests throughout last year, those wishing to express their First Amendment rights need to follow the law. Senator Ron Johnson, one of more than a dozen who plan to block President-elect Joe Biden's electoral victory in several states during the joint session, also called for law and order. I abhor all kinds of uh, lawlessness. I don't condone it in the slightest. I condemn it. Uh, never should have happened. You know, peaceful protests are one thing. Uh, this was not a, a particularly peaceful protest. U.S. Rep Mark Pocan calls it domestic terrorism on a day that's going down in history for all the wrong reasons. I just think this is so sad um, in our nation's history. This will go down as a historically sad day. Dane County Sheriff Dave Mahoney, also as president of the National Sheriff's Association, sent out his remarks calling the violence and injuries at the Capitol repulsive to any freedom-loving American, also calling this an assault to our democracy. Maddie O'Neill live at the Capitol. Maddie, thank you. Pro-Trump protesters also got together at state capitals around the country today, including right there in Madison at the Capitol, all with the same message. They say Donald Trump is the winner of the election. People marched and drove their cars around the square before moving to the governor's residence. There were also a few counter-protesters that showed up today as well, but everything remained peaceful. As we learn more about what happened today in our nation's capital and continued reaction from local and state lawmakers, be sure to stay with News 3 Now and Channel3000.com for any updates. Next at 10, let's take a breath and go to meteorologist Dana Fulton with our first warn forecast. Hi, Dana. Hi, it is a, a chilly breath for us out here on the patio right now. Another night where we're expecting temperatures to stay cool and a little fog to come along with that. A dense fog advisory is in effect for most of southern Wisconsin and central Wisconsin as well. For tomorrow morning, we'll have spots with some dense fog and also some spots uh, with some freezing fog. So slick roads might be a possibility for uh, early Thursday. Visit down to about four miles for much of Dane County and Rock County, but down under a mile for much of Iowa County at this time. That's expected to just continue to get worse heading into tomorrow. Temperature wise, we're a bit warmer than where we were at this time yesterday. Close to 27 in Madison, 32 in Janesville. That's very close to our dew points right now. So the fog a concern for us overnight. Cloudy skies still ahead. A little bit of a, a copy and paste forecast. Tomorrow and Friday will be very similar to what we've seen for the last several days. With fog in the morning and clouds in the afternoon, but we might start to see some sunshine by the end of the weekend. We'll take a closer look at your full 10 day in just a few minutes. 50 more people have died of coronavirus in Wisconsin. That brings the state's total to more than 5,100. And as hospitals fill up across the U.S., the state is also reporting more than 3,300 new COVID cases. The state is nearing 500,000 total cases. SSM Health has begun vaccinating health care workers outside of its own employees today. Those include dentists and home health care providers. Right now, the health care provider is starting the smaller, starting with smaller 
smaller frontline health organizations and moving on to larger groups next week. More than 7,000 SSM health employees have been vaccinated and some are receiving their second doses this week. The Madison VA has begun distributing the COVID-19 vaccines to patients. 81-year-old veteran Emanuel Volz of Madison received the first COVID vaccine distributed to patients today at the William S. Middleton Memorial Veterans Hospital. He's been a volunteer there for the past six years. The Madison VA received an initial shipment of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine back on December 23rd and started administering the shot to frontline staff. While COVID-19 vaccinations have begun, it will be months before they will be widely available. And that means there's still a critical need for convalescent plasma. Our Mark Kane tells us what it is, and why it's so important in treating COVID-19. Dr. Jasmine Zapata is donating her plasma. She's a UW Health pediatrician and recently recovered from COVID-19. I decided to donate my plasma because there are currently right in Wisconsin, people in ICUs across the state fighting for their lives. And I knew that the plasma inside of my blood had the power to save other lives because I was someone who recovered. Convalescent plasma has been authorized to treat people who are currently in the hospital fighting the virus. While the supply of the plasma is good in Madison, that's not the case in other parts of the state and country. There are several communities very, very close to us here who need help uh, in treating patients with COVID-19 uh, and they are deficient in, in supply of convalescent plasma. And so uh, the need is really to, to get as many people to be able to donate uh, their plasma if they've recovered from COVID-19 so that we can treat uh, sick people in, in hospitals all around our state, all around uh, the Midwest and all around the country. If you donate in the Madison area, the plasma can be safely shipped anywhere it's needed. Dr. Zapata said the whole donation process takes about two hours, but the satisfaction of helping others lasts long after that. The people that are there in the hospital are the ones that need us the most, um, especially to get this life-saving convalescent plasma. And so for that reason, um, it was so important for me to donate. I'm R.K., News 3 Now. If you have recovered from COVID-19 and you'd like to know more about donating, call the number on your screen. It's area code 608-262-8300. Still to come tonight, Democrats flip both Senate seats in the Georgia runoff elections. Plus an update on what's happening in the nation's capital as lawmakers get back to work after what has been a chaotic day. Stay with us. This is the big one, folks. The Brothers Main Everything's on Sale sale. Get huge clearance prices on every brand in the store with 0% financing for up to 18 months. Only Main delivers more satisfaction every day, like a risk-free 30-day price satisfaction guarantee, giving you 100% confidence in your purchase. How's that for more? The Everything's on Sale sale with more selection, more savings, and more happy homes on everything. Now at the Brothers Main, your local store for more since 1938. Ah, well, U.S. Cellular is giving away the latest phones for free with no hidden requirements, so I did not want to miss it. Actually, you can get the latest phones free all season long. What? All season long, huh? Yep, and no hidden requirements. You in the market for any camping gear? Um, Only been used once. At U.S. Cellular, get the latest phones free with the plan of your choice and no required phone trade-ins all season long. U.S. Cellular, upgrade to fair. Dear Winter, I'm coming. My squad of 15 vehicles with all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive is ready to take you on. Safety's the name of my game, so you better bundle up. Toyota. Right now, get $1,500 customer cash on a new 2021 Highlander Hybrid. Visit Toyota.com to learn more. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Culver's is a family restaurant. To me, that means being the place that puts a smile on everyone's face. We're famous for our cooked-to-order butter burgers and frozen custard made daily inside our restaurants. But we've always believed more menu options mean more ways to brighten your day. We source the finest chicken to bring you our tenders and chicken sandwiches. And our cheese curds. They're a Wisconsin tradition we're proud to share with you. So take the next meal shift off and let us take care of you. Welcome to Delicious. 
Hey folks, before a big decision for Madison Public Schools to reopen or not, Thursday morning we'll take a look at how the transition is going in a different district. Join us from 4.30 to 7 for News 3 Now This Morning. Waking up to stuff like this should never be a surprise. Download the Channel 3000 First Warn app and be ready for whatever Mother Nature throws our way. Tonight at 6, protesters stormed the U.S. Capitol, putting the electoral vote count on hold. And researchers are looking to get more pregnant women and children involved in COVID vaccine clinical trials. We'll hear from local medical experts. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Welcome back. We are continuing to follow breaking news in our nation's capital at this hour. These are live pictures in the U.S. House. Lawmakers back at work picking up where they left off before rioters stormed the Capitol building. A curfew went into effect at 6 tonight Eastern time as the National Guard moved into the city to retake control. It was this afternoon when a group of pro-Trump violent protesters stormed past the Capitol Police using chemical agents and broke into the building while a joint session of Congress was being held. The D.C. police declared the scene a riot. One person was shot inside the building and later died. The building was declared secure about four hours later. And as always, be sure to stay with News 3 Now and Channel3000.com for any updates to this developing story. Well, everything happen, happened in D.C., there were new developments in the runoff elections in Georgia. Democrats needed to win both races to control the U.S. Senate. The one went their way early this morning, and now CBS News projects Democrats have won that second Senate seat in the state of Georgia. Skylar Henry reports. CBS News projects Democrat John Ossoff the winner of his runoff election with incumbent Senator David Perdue. The victory flips control of the Senate to Democrats, who will also control the House and the White House. Ossoff declared victory earlier this morning. I will look forward to serving you in the United States Senate with integrity, with humility, with honor. Overnight, CBS News projected the Reverend Raphael Warnock defeated Republican incumbent Kelly Leffler, making the Democrat Georgia's first black senator. Voters of this state across racial and geographical and cultural lines stood up and said it's about time we had someone in Washington who's thinking about ordinary people. But Leffler still sees a path to victory and promised to keep fighting. We got some work to do here. This is a game of inches. We're going to win this election. We're going to save this country. The high stakes in these races weren't lost on anyone here in Georgia. The candidate spent more than $340 million in just two months, while 4.6 million Georgians voted. A CBS News exit poll found the coronavirus pandemic weighed heavily on voters. More than half said they experienced financial hardship due to the pandemic. There's no way we lost Georgia this time. President Trump repeatedly claimed election fraud for the presidential race in the state, but CBS News found 7 in 10 Georgia voters felt confident the votes cast in this election will be counted fairly. Under Georgia law, candidates can request a recount if the margin is less than or equal to 0.5 percentage points. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Atlanta. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer issued a statement this morning saying, quote, it feels like a brand new day. For the first time in six years, Democrats will operate a majority in the United States Senate. As the winter settles in, the Lake Geneva ice castles are preparing for opening day. As of right now, they are hoping to open on January 15th. That is next Friday. They say the opening is weather dependent and there will be new safety and social distancing guidelines in place. And let's check in once again with meteorologist Dana Fulton. Right now it is starting to become a little foggy outside and depending on which areas of town you may be at, uh, already seen some denser fog for, for parts of Iowa County, not quite as dense for us in Madison just yet, but we do have that dense fog advisory already in effect for most of southern Wisconsin and stretching north. That's going to continue into tomorrow morning. Dense fog, also the possibility for some freezing fog again, and that freezing fog could make a, a few slick spots for us on the roads. We did over the last few days see a few reports of black ice and 
spot, so something to keep in mind tomorrow. Uh, just be careful if you're heading the roads early and you're getting closer to those, those dense fog spots. Overall, normal temperatures or near normal temperatures in the 10 day. Uh, we're really not expecting to see a big jump or a big drop with our temps. We're, we're pretty steady. Sky conditions stay pretty steady. Our fog chances stay pretty steady. And then by the end of next week, we have our next opportunity for some light snow to develop could bring a little bit of light accumul accumulation. Right now, radar is quiet even with this cloudy sky, not seeing any precipitation build in. That pattern will continue for us overnight. Temperatures really don't move around much overnight with the cloudy sky overhead. We'll start the day off tomorrow in the mid to upper 20s. Afternoon highs will be in the low 30s for Thursday. Friday morning, again, starting off in the 20s and then in the afternoon, expecting those high temperatures in the mid to upper 20s. So a very a January like pattern with cool temperatures, cloudy skies and a little morning fog, that fog with our, our dew points pretty close to our temperatures and of course that snowpack on the ground just fueling the cycle. Our temperature trend in our six to 10 day outlook, likely that we are going to be trending above average. We'll see some warmer days, not a big jump, but a few degrees warmer in that six to 10 day outlook. But as we look at towards about two weeks out, not a big trend in one direction or the other for our temperatures. Now precipitation likely will start to trend above average. That lines up a small opportunity to see some light snow towards the end of our forecast. Right now, it doesn't look like a lot of accumulation, but it's something that we're starting to keep an eye on right now. Uh, just because over the next several days, things are going to be pretty steady, pretty consistent in the weather office. Mostly cloudy skies, temps tomorrow in the mid to low 30s. What's the chance for some fog early on in the day? We'll stay cloudy for Friday and for Saturday. Temperatures stay steady, kind of a copy and paste as we look ahead to Friday and Saturday. By Sunday, the start of next week, though, a little more sun building in, variably cloudy skies. So I'll have a little bit of sun in the afternoon with high temperatures in the upper 20s. Very seasonable outside. And then as we look ahead to the end of the week, that's when our opportunity for a little light snow develops. Could see some minor accumulations with that event and some cooler temperatures building in behind it. That's a quick look at our forecast. Dana, thank you. Coming up in sports, the Bucks make it three straight wins with ease. How tonight's game was pretty much a carbon copy of Monday's win for Milwaukee. Zach's in next with sports. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. At Papa Murphy's, we make fresh pizza that you bake at home. Because home is where the cozy is. Home is where the fun is. Home is where the together is. And home is where the yum is. Because when you taste a fresh made home baked pizza, you won't want to be anywhere else. Right now, get the herb chicken Mediterranean pizza with chicken, sun dried tomatoes, and zesty herbs on thin crust for just $9. Papa Murphy's. Change the way you pizza. With eye care, you can receive up to $1,200 in over the counter benefits to buy brand name and generic products. Shop in store or get the items delivered free from our catalog. Rest easy. Eye care is looking out for your health needs. Now through January 7th, join Planet Fitness for no enrollment. $10 a month, no commitment. 2020 is over. Start 2021 with tons of ways to get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. And spread out while you work out with cardio distancing and our new crowd meter. Plus, use our app to get moving anywhere. Your fitness is essential, so kick things off with the year's best deal. Join for no enrollment, $10 a month, no commitment. Deal ends January 7th. Five Madison area locations. Sign up for $10 a month. Stop in today. Is your credit score getting in the way of the things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit offer fast and flexible lending. Borrow up to $10,000 and choose repayment terms that work for you. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. Love lower than low prices? Then get more ways to save at Pick and Save, where you can find personalized coupons, weekly deals, and rewards like fuel points. All for prices that are lower than low. On food that's fresher than fresh. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. 
At American Family Insurance, we've always protected more than what you drive. We've protected and supported the dreams that drive you. Right now, that means extending our 10% savings on auto premium for all current and new auto customers through March, so you can get a little closer to your dream. Whether your dream is discovering new roads and new limits, or supporting that dream. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully. Dream fearlessly. The forecast calls for a messy commute. The Ford lineup helps keep you in command. Intelligent four-wheel drive monitors traction. And a terrain management system adapts to road conditions at the turn of a knob. So you're ready to take on the elements with confidence. Power through the storm in a new Ford Explorer. Now with 0% financing for 72 months, plus 4,250 bonus cash. See your Wisconsin dealer today. For the second time in three days, the Bucks were hosting the Pistons. In Monday's game, Milwaukee led pretty much from start to finish. And Giannis did what he does, scoring a season-high 43 points. Tonight, the Bucks made a couple statements, but none bigger than this. Off the opening tip, both Milwaukee and Detroit took a knee. And then Giannis, well, he went to work, parting the sea for the two-handed slam, part of his team-high 25. And Chris Middleton was cooking, too. Milwaukee made 19 threes tonight. Middleton drained five of them. He added in 23. Bucks win their third straight game, 130 to 115. The Badger women still winless in the Big Ten. Northwestern used a 32-point second quarter to go up by 20, and Wisconsin never recovered. UW falls 80 to 55. Kate Thompson, the only bright spot, she led the way with nine points off the bench in just 14 minutes. For the Badgers playing in the World Juniors, the gold medal game finished with two totally different feelings after the United States shut out Canada. Elation for Cole Caulfield and Alex Turcotte, and heartbreak for Dylan Holloway. But for now, Holloway and Caulfield have to shift their focus onto the Gophers. The plan is for those two to play this weekend if all goes well during their COVID protocol on Thursday and practice on Friday. And if that happens, it will be the first time since their series against Notre Dame that Wisconsin will be at full strength. Now we're all here, so I think it's going to be uh, exciting you know, when those guys do get back in our locker room and kind of can put the pieces back into where you think they, they, they fit right as far as our lineup goes. Uh, and uh, it doesn't let us off the hook from the standpoint that just because everybody's here now, it's all good. I mean, there's still a lot of work to be done. First up, a date with top-ranked Minnesota. The Gophers had no problems during the first half of their season. Ten games, ten wins. So Saturday, they're coming to the bond with a lot of momentum and a lot of confidence. And that's just what the Badgers want. It's pride. Um, it's competitiveness to show where your program's at. Obviously, with what Minnesota's done uh, the first ten games, you know, they feel... Um, like this is a special year for them with the way it started. And I think we feel the same way with our group as well. Obviously with them being the number one team right now is, um, you know, they, they're coming in and obviously we want to we knock them down. So, um, you know, it's going to be exciting two games and I think we're ready for it. That's it for sports. We're back after this. Hey, Tom. Menards has everything you need to give your bathroom a fresh, new look. Start with a new toilet from American Standard. This tight and tall, elongated toilet has a powerful flush and AquaGuard to reduce condensation. It's just $209. Then finish your update with a new Delta shower. This high crop shower features smooth wall surfaces, is easy to clean, and it's mildew resistant. It's only $539.98. Now, during Menards Project Day Sale. Save big money at Menards. To count down the days, but my ski trip to Cascade Mountain with my cousin each year, so much fun. We used to pretend like we were flying. Now, we really do. My dad and my uncle like that we still <laughs> ski free. But Noah and I, we just have fun. See you there. Forecast calls for a messy commute. The Ford lineup helps keep you in command. 
intelligent four-wheel drive monitors traction, and a terrain management system adapts to road conditions at the turn of a knob. So you're ready to take on the elements with confidence. Power through the storm in a new Ford Explorer, now with 0% financing for 72 months, plus 4,250 bonus cash. See your Wisconsin dealer today. If we spend a third of our life sleeping, shouldn't we try to get the best sleep possible? That's why Denver Mattress is all about that sleep life. And during the New Year's Super Sale, save 100 bucks on every 1000 you spend. Score free shipping and check out the Summit Firm for only $199.99. Save up to $200 on Rejuvenate Power Bases. Or purchase a Tempur-Pedic and get a free $300 Furniture Row gift certificate plus five years no interest financing. But hurry, the New Year's Super Sale at Denver Mattress ends soon. Hey, Tom. Sheila. Hey, uh, don't take losing the Anderson business personally. I resigned it, Tom. I guess they didn't tell you about their opossum problem. I thought it was pronounced possum. Accurate news as it happens. Right here, where you live. Information that you can use from the team you can trust. For more local stories that impact your life, News 3 Now. Get more local news now with Channel 3000 Plus, our free digital streaming service that brings you area news and info 24-7 from the News 3 Now team. Channel 3000 Plus. Download it today and watch from your streaming media player or mobile device. updated on coronavirus vaccine information with News 3 Now. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Finally at 10, we have breaking news as we take one last look tonight at the U.S. Capitol building. D.C. police are now saying four people died today during the protests and riots there. They say one was shot by police, three others died of medical emergencies. They add that 52 people were also arrested. As this story develops, be sure to stay with News 3 Now, CBS News, and Channel3000.com for the very latest updates. Let's go to Dana. Dana here's one final meteorologist. Check. Sorry about that. <laughs> After you. Dana, I'm go here. Ahead. Final check. We have a dense fog advisory in effect tonight, and that goes for tomorrow morning as well. Cloudy skies expected for your Thursday. High temperatures in the low 30s. We'll be in the upper 20s for afternoon highs through the weekend. By the start of next week, we might see a little bit of sunshine coming through with variably cloudy skies. And our next chance for any light snow starts to develop for the end of the work week and into the following weekend with some cooler temperatures coming through. After that sort of stuff. All right, Dana, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News Now at 10. Do something good, be well, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.